Let's talk about the truth about this current crypto bull market. This current bull market we're currently in the midst of is unlike any previous bull market we have seen in the past. In this video, we're going to talk about how to best navigate these changes and what makes this current bull market unique. We're also going to touch on why this current point of time is actually a great opportunity for crypto investors. So if you're new to crypto or you're a seasoned veteran, or you just want to make the most out of the biggest opportunity of our lifetime, this is a video for you. The four things we're going to cover is firstly, why this bull market is different and why it has much longer to go. Secondly, the most likely way this crypto cycle is going to continue to play out. Thirdly, the major catalyst we can expect over the next 12 months. And finally, the best exit strategy you should have in place for 2024 and 2025. Now guys, before we jump into the video, and I hate to do it, but if you've ever enjoyed any of the videos that were posted on the channel, if you could just take one quick second to go below and hit subscribe, it helps out the channel more than you know. The bigger the channel gets, the bigger guests we can have on, and the better content and information we can provide you. It's completely completely free and it only takes one second. Right now, only 5% of our viewers are actually subscribed to the channel. If we could bump that up to 20%, it would mean the world to me. Thank you and let's jump in. Okay, first things first, let's analyze why this current bull market cycle we're currently in the midst of is unlike anything we've seen in the past and why it has much longer to go. The most glaring reason this current crypto bull market is different to anything we've seen in the past is that we've hit a new Bitcoin all-time high before the Bitcoin halving, which is unprecedented. We've broken it on the back of the Bitcoin ETFs and a vacuum cleaner of institutional buying by the likes of BlackRock, Fidelity, Bitwise, and ARK Invest. So far to date, these big institutions have already bought up over 860,000 Bitcoin, which when you account for lost Bitcoin is over 5% of the total available supply. And keep in mind, they've only been going for six months. Now, this number is only going to go upwards. Of course, there's gonna be some dips here and there, but as you can see by the chart, in the first six months, the trend is clear. It's only going to go upward. The reason for this is institutional investors are much different to the usual retail investors we've seen in previous crypto cycles. The investors that are buying these ETFs are institutional and sophisticated investors, and when they buy, they're holding for the long term. So that's one thing that's different. The institutions are here, they're vacuuming up the Bitcoin supply, and they're not going to stop anytime soon, and they push the Bitcoin price to a new all-time high before the Bitcoin halving. But now, let's talk about why the Bitcoin price has been chopping around and actually gone downward since the Bitcoin halving. There's a common expectation that after the Bitcoin halving, because the supply being put onto the market is cut in half, we'll see a huge parabolic move upwards, and it kind of makes sense. If the supply of Bitcoin coming onto the market each day is all of a sudden cut in half, it makes sense that we would expect prices to go upwards. It's just economics 101. If supply is cut in half but demand stays the same, prices should move upwards to meet that new equilibrium. However, in reality, and in all previous Bitcoin halvings, we actually don't see that happen. What we see immediately after the halving is this period of choppiness and prices actually going downwards. And there's one good reason for this, and that reason is minor capitulation. Minor capitulation is pretty easy to understand. All around the world, we have Bitcoin miners who have massive operations mining Bitcoin. And these are businesses who have computer costs, staff costs, and electricity costs. Every time a Bitcoin halving comes along, guess what happens? The amount of money that these Bitcoin miners were making overnight gets cut in half. They have to do the same amount of work and they have the exact same costs, but literally overnight, the amount of money they're making in the form of Bitcoin gets cut in half. And for the majority of Bitcoin miners, this isn't a problem. Generally, they're profitable and the price of Bitcoin will move upwards, so everything is okay. However, there is a cohort of Bitcoin miners, the least efficient and least profitable Bitcoin miners who are all of a sudden in trouble. Their income just got cut in half and they are no longer profitable. So what ends up happening is a culling of the weakest, least profitable and least efficient Bitcoin miners. What happens to these worst Bitcoin miners is that they have to start selling off the Bitcoin that they're mining and any Bitcoin that they have on their balance sheet. We know all of this is going on because of something called the Bitcoin hash rate. Ever since the Bitcoin halving, we've seen the Bitcoin hash rate move downwards, which is a sign that there's less Bitcoin miners on the network. Essentially, the worst Bitcoin miners who can't afford it anymore are throwing in the towel and giving up. OG on-chain Bitcoin analyst Willy Woo pointed this out on Twitter with his Bitcoin hash ribbons chart. When this chart starts trending down, it's a clear sign of minor capitulation. Willy says, I'll break it down in simple terms. When does Bitcoin recover? It's when weak miners die and hash rate recovers. This one is for the record books as it's taking a lot of time for minor capitulation post-halving. 
This Bitcoin halving is a unique case because it's the longest time since the Bitcoin halving that we're seeing miners capitulate. In previous cycles, we saw Bitcoin miners die off quite quickly and capitulate. In the 2016 halving, it only took 24 days, and in the 2020 halving, it only took 8 days. However, because we were around all-time high prices during the 2024 halving, the Bitcoin miners can sell off their Bitcoin at much higher prices and hang on that just extra little bit longer. Now, the good news is, is that it cannot go on forever. It's already at a record-breaking amount of time for miners to capitulate, and eventually they will throw in the towel and move on. It's at this point when all the least profitable and least efficient Bitcoin miners have capitulated that we'll start to see the Bitcoin hash rate improve and we'll also see the Bitcoin price move upwards as well. Essentially, all we're seeing at the moment is a cleansing of the worst Bitcoin miners. The other reason we're seeing the Bitcoin price chop around and actually move downwards is because we're getting a unique combination of different sellers in the market. First off, we have Mt. Gox. Mt. Gox was the biggest Bitcoin exchange back in 2014, and at the time they went bankrupt, they were actually facilitating over 70% of all the buys and sells of Bitcoin in the market. In 2014, due to hacks, it all blew up and they ended up going bankrupt. Bankruptcy firms took over and they took control of all the rest of the Bitcoin that they held. However, now in 2024, 10 years later, 10 years later, the bankruptcy process has come to an end and some of those investors that held their Bitcoin on Mt. Gox are getting a small portion of their original Bitcoin back. The total amount of Bitcoin investors are getting back from Mt. Gox is over 140,000 Bitcoin, which at the price of Bitcoin right now is over $9 billion worth of Bitcoin. Back in 2014, when they originally held their Bitcoin on Mt. Gox, Bitcoin was worth just $600. Now, Bitcoin is worth over $60,000, which means they have a 100x on their original Bitcoin. So it's only understandable that a certain percentage of these original Mt. Gox holders are going to sell off some, if not all, of their Bitcoin. They're sitting on a 100x. On top of this, over the last month, we've also seen the German government, who hold over $3 billion worth of Bitcoin, start to move some of their Bitcoin portfolio onto exchanges. This is an indication that they intend to start selling. We've also seen the US government, who hold over 13 billion dollars worth of bitcoin start to move a few hundred million dollars worth of bitcoin onto exchanges so it looks like they're intending to sell a portion of their bitcoin too so since the bitcoin halving we're seeing this weird choppy downwards price action for two main reasons first off we're having miners capitulate and second off we're having this weird combination of sellers from mount gox the u.s government and the german government However, there are some positives to this. First off, the minor capitulation cannot go forever. We're already in record-breaking territory and it will soon come to an end. And secondly, considering the record-breaking minor capitulation and the combination of weird selling from Mt. Gox, the US government and the German government, the Bitcoin price is actually holding up pretty well given all the circumstances. And this all just goes to show the power of the institutional buying that we are seeing. Now, Something I want to dispel before we move on is that Bitcoin and crypto is still without a doubt in a bull market. Bitcoin is up over 100% from 12 months ago and year to date it's up over 40%, which for any other asset class you would be thrilled by these returns. It's just Bitcoin and crypto that when prices aren't going parabolically up, people seem to lose their minds and lose interest in the space despite insane returns. However, the best of this bull run is still to come and I'll prove it to you throughout the rest of this video. One thing I want to point out before we move on is that even with the minor capitulation and the weird selling we're seeing from Mt. Gox, the US government and the German government, this cycle price action is actually playing out very similar to previous price action of previous cycles. If we take a look at Bitcoin's return on investment from each of the previous Bitcoin halvings, we can see that they all trade sideways and have a period of downwards for the first three to six months. This is always because of minor capitulation and it would suggest that we don't see Bitcoin and crypto prices start to pick up until around September or October this year. The last point I want to make in this section is that we haven't seen retail investors move back into the Bitcoin or crypto market in this cycle at all. The way we know that is by looking at Google search term results for Bitcoin or crypto. When we do this, we can see that it's nowhere near the frenzy levels we saw back in 2017 or 2021. On top of this, I know from subjective experience that retail is definitely not back into the market. If we look at the amount of views that crypto channels are getting on YouTube, they are still way, way down, so there really isn't just much mainstream interest in crypto right now. If prices aren't moving upwards and they aren't moving upwards fast, it just doesn't capture the attention of a mainstream audience. This is why we're seeing a lull right now, however, it does present a huge opportunity for the people that are here. 
It won't be until the second part of the cycle that we're going into now, when we see retailer turn, that we see the huge altcoin rallies and parabolic price moves in Bitcoin and crypto that we all know and love. The best is yet to come. So we know that this crypto bull market is very different to previous bull markets. However, with all things considered, the price action is still tracking very similarly. But that begs one question, how will the rest of the cycle play out from here? Well, by looking at the three previous cycles, we can come up with a loose game plan on what we can expect to see from here on in. It's scary how similarly Bitcoin tracked its four-year cycle, and I see nothing outside of Bitcoin hitting a new all-time high that says it won't do the same. I see no reason to suggest why this trend won't continue, and why the second half of the crypto bull market cycle won't closely mimic what it has done in the previous three cycles. Which means I expect to see Bitcoin and crypto prices start to pick up again around October or November of this year, which is in line with what it did in its cycles in 2017 and 2021. We also have a few tailwinds that are going to help us along in this bull run. The first thing I mentioned earlier is the Bitcoin ETFs. The big guys like BlackRock, Fidelity, Bitwise and ARK Invest are only going to continue to be buying Bitcoin and taking supply off of the market. A good chart to visualize this is our from Bloomberg ETF analyst James Seyfart who shows us what healthy ETF growth looks like. It starts slow at first and there are some bumps away, but over time it grows into this behemoth. I expect we'll see the same with the Bitcoin ETFs. Another one is what happened when the first gold ETFs were approved. It started off slow at first with the price of gold going down and sideways, but over time it exploded upwards and went parabolic. Another catalyst we have in the space is the launch of the Ethereum ETFs. In a move that no one saw coming, they all of a sudden got approved and we have the inflows and the launch of the Ethereum ETFs to look forward to. This will be a major catalyst, especially for altcoins in the space. The inflows into the Ethereum ETFs will especially be a catalyst for altcoin prices. Finally, we have the US presidential election, and especially after the US presidential debate, the most likely person to win is Donald Trump. Now, I'm not here to pick sides or talk politics, but if we're looking at it from a purely logical and crypto lens, the most likely person to go in is Donald Trump, and this will be a good thing for crypto. Trump has come out multiple times throughout his campaign in support of both Bitcoin and crypto. He accepts Bitcoin and crypto donations. He's against Elizabeth Warren and CBDCs. And surprisingly, he also said he would pardon Ross Ulbricht, the creator and founder of the Silk Road, if he is elected. These are all positives for the crypto space. Another reason the US presidential election is bullish for crypto prices and will serve as a catalyst is because in the lead up to them, we generally see a huge amount of monetary easing, which means money printing. We're most likely going to see rate cuts in the back half of this year, and in the lead up to the election, we always see money printing. It's a trend we always see, and it's in a bid to buy votes. When we see looser monetary conditions and interest rate cuts, we generally see assets that are further out on the risk curve perform Form the best. This means Bitcoin and crypto. On top of this, if Trump is in fact to win, at least in his last term as president, it was very beneficial for equities and the stock market and they went up in the realm of 15%. As Bitcoin and the crypto market is loosely correlated to equities, this would be a good thing for crypto. So there's a few major catalysts in the future that we have to look forward to in crypto. Now, as for the second half of this crypto bull run, what I think is the most likely scenario is we start to see prices pick up again around September or October, and it will set off around a 12-month timer of a parabolic bull run that we all know and love in crypto. This will end sometime around October or November of 2025, and we will then see another bear market. The reason I think this is the most likely scenario for the rest of the bull run to play out is that something we saw in both of the two previous cycles is that the altcoin market peaked exactly 546 days after the Bitcoin halving. If this scenario does in fact play out again, it would suggest the crypto market peaks around October of 2025. Of course, it probably won't play out exactly like this, but as a loose game plan, I think it's the best thing we've got to try and predict out how the second half of this bull run is going to play out. Finally, I want to talk about strategy. Strategy. Although I expect the second half of the bull run to play out like second half of the bull runs of previous cycles, there will be one main difference I think we see. And by that I mean Bitcoin dominance increasing and all altcoins bleeding against Bitcoin. 
So far in the first half of this crypto bull run, only six altcoins in the top 50 coins have actually outperformed Bitcoin. However, in the first half of crypto bull runs, this is completely normal. In each and every one of the crypto cycles we have seen so far, the capital flow plays out the exact same each time, which is essentially just investors moving out on the risk curve. First off, we have capital flowing into Bitcoin, which is what we've seen so far in this cycle. We then see capital flowing into Ethereum and it's when Ethereum starts to outperform Bitcoin and then this flows into Solana, then the biggest altcoins, then medium caps, then smaller caps, and then NFTs. What we see as we get deeper and deeper in the cycle is investors chasing higher and higher returns by buying riskier and riskier assets. In this cycle, we've only seen Bitcoin dominance go up and only six coins in the top 50 outperform Bitcoin. I believe we see this change at some point between now and September, October, and we'll start to see Ethereum, Solana, and the rest of the altcoins start to outperform Bitcoin. This will be helped along by the launch of the Ethereum ETFs, and then down the line at some point in 2025, we've already seen issuers file for a Solana ETF so this will probably help Solana prices and the rest of the altcoin market at some point next year. Given all of this, what I personally think right now is the best strategy from now until around June or July of 2025 is scaling into Ethereum, Solana, and any old coins you think are promising. Then around the middle of next year, until around October or November of 2025, I'll start scaling out and taking money off the table or adding to my Bitcoin position. This is just my loose game plan for the rest of the bull run and heading into 2025, but of course I do have my Bitcoin and Ethereum never sell holdings. Of course, you'll have to come up with a strategy for yourself, depending on what your risk tolerance is, what your financial position is, and what altcoins you think are promising. As for the coins that I think have the best odds of outperforming Bitcoin, I'll do a full breakdown video on this later, but the ones that have already outperformed Bitcoin in the first half of the bull run, I think are a pretty good pick. To me, they've already shown their hands that they can outperform Bitcoin, and if all altcoins start outperforming Bitcoin in the second half of this cycle, I think they have a pretty good chance at being in the top few. These six coins include Shiba Inu, Doge, BNB, Mantle, and Render. One other narrative I think is going to perform extremely well over the second half of this cycle is again going to be the meme coin narrative. I think we're going to see a lot more shenanigans with meme coins and their prices are going to do well and my one pick in this space would of course be dog with hat. The final thing I want to touch on in this video is what is probably the most important topic is what should your exit strategy or sell strategy be in 2025. But before that, if you've made it this far into the video, you're clearly interested in Bitcoin and crypto. If you want to do yourself an extremely quick 10 second favor and want to stay up to date with Bitcoin and crypto, be sure to hit the first link in the description and sign up for my email newsletter, The Crypto Nutshell. It's a five minute daily email that gives you the latest expert predictions, top on-chain analysis, and any breaking news you need to know in Bitcoin and crypto. The best part is it's completely free and it always will be. Hit that first link in the description now, enter your email, and I'll see you in your inbox tomorrow morning with all the latest news on Bitcoin and crypto. Now, as for exit strategies, we already have a basic game plan on how we think the second half of this bull run is going to play out. It's been playing out very similar to previous cycles and it suggests we see a peak at sometime around October or November of 2025. However, we also know this bull run is uniquely different. We've already seen a Bitcoin all-time high before the Bitcoin halving. That could suggest one thing, and that is that we're in an accelerated cycle. The other thing we should consider is that this outline I have laid out to you with Bitcoin and crypto peaking at some point around October and November of 2025 is no secret. A lot of other investors are already thinking the same, and generally when there's a big consensus in investing, the thing everyone is expecting to happen actually doesn't play out at all. This is why I begin to start looking to scale out of my positions, especially my riskier positions, around June or July of next year, just in case we're getting that accelerated cycle. The other thing you'll want to be on the lookout for is common top signals that we've seen in every previous cycle. Generally, at tops of crypto cycles, the number one sell signal is that Coinbase becomes the number one app in the App Store. Another top signal is that you start to see all of mainstream media start to constantly cover crypto and Bitcoin. It seems like everywhere you turn, it's being reported on, there's always stories about it, there's people becoming crypto millionaires, and you just can't escape it. What's more is around the top of the cycle is when crypto companies really step up their marketing budget. So you start to see advertisements for crypto, exchanges, Bitcoin everywhere on the sides of buses, 
on TV and in the middle of the Super Bowl. Finally, another key top signal, it's not very measurable, but it's the one when your family members start asking you about crypto, it's when your grandma calls you and asks what's up with Bitcoin or crypto, and it's when your friends who are never normally interested in investing start asking you about crypto. When any of these top signals pop up, it should be setting off alarm bells in your head that were either at or close to the top of the market, and you should start scaling out of your positions. So just to recap everything, and just to remind you, this is just my own outlook, please come up with your own and take everything with a grain of salt, and my thesis will change as new market dynamics pop up. But as of right now, I think the most likely scenario is we start to see Bitcoin and crypto prices really start to pick up around October or November of this year. Then we're going to have a period of around 12 months of a really good bull market where we see the parabolic prices move upwards. It's in this period I think we start to see Ethereum start to outperform Bitcoin first, then we see Solana start to outperform, and then the rest of the altcoins start to outperform Bitcoin too, and then eventually NFTs. The most likely scenario I think we see the market topping is around October or November of 2025. However, I will probably start to scale out of my positions around June or July just in case we have that accelerated cycle. And I still think we're going to see the classic crypto cycles and we will have a bear market and another winter. I think that just comes down to human psychology. Along the way, I'll also be very wary of various top signals such as Coinbase becoming the number one app in the app store. My family members, my grandma, my Uber driver start talking to me about Bitcoin or crypto and starting to see crypto advertisement everywhere. If these pop up, it will be a huge red flag to me. So there it is, this bull market is uniquely different, however its price action is tracking very similarly to the previous cycles we've seen play out in the past, and I think we can use them as a loose guideline as to what we'll see from here until the end of it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments and what your plans are for the second half of this crypto cycle. If you're new here, if you could do me a huge favor and hit the subscribe button, it really helps me put out more content and get better and better guests on and provide better and better content for you. It only takes two seconds and only 5% of the people who watch the videos are subscribed. If you do subscribe, I'll be eternally grateful. Anyway guys, hope you did enjoy today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all in the next one and as always, all the best.